I'm Christine Klein. Uh, I'm at the uh, Institute of Neurogenetics at the University of Lübeck in northern Germany. And the focus of our work is uh, genetic forms of Parkinsonism, in particular early onset forms of Parkinsonism, such as due to mutations in the PINK1 and Parkin gene. And recently our focus has been on induced pluripotent stem cell models of these diseases. I would just like to show you uh, two patients, one with a Parkin mutation and one with a PINK1 mutation, and these really illustrate how good a model these genetic forms of Parkinsonism are because they really um, mimic the idiopathic form of the disease. Also, this illustrates how induced pluripotent stem cells can be used as a very good endogenous model of PINK1 and Parkin as uh, they really recapitulate the entire uh, genome of the respective patients. Induced pluripotent stem cells, or IPS for short, are derived usually from a small skin biopsy, and these skin fibroblasts are then uh, reprogrammed into stem cells. And later on, these stem cells can then be differentiated into uh, tissues of interest, such as, in our case, nerve cells or neurons. And uh, in Parkinson's disease, obviously, we are particularly interested in dopaminergic neurons that stain positively here for uh, tyrosine hydroxylase. With respect to Parkin and PINK1, um, there is a pathway called mitophagy that has been implicated in uh, their function or dysfunction when mutated. Um, what happens is that PINK1 accumulates on depolarized uh, or dysfunctional mitochondria, and this then leads to the recruitment of Parkin. In the next step, uh, outer mitochondrial membrane proteins are ubiquitinated. Um, autophagosomes are form formed, and uh, then later those mitochondria are de uh, degraded um, in the lysosome. And also, it has been shown more recently that the ubiquitin proteasome system also plays an important role. Let me just show you here uh, the difference um, of this pathway in fibroblasts versus IPS-derived neurons from the same patients. So on the right here, you can see the neurons. Um, we're comparing uh, a control and neurons or fibroblasts from a PINK1 mutant patient. And these are the loading controls. And also, uh, you can see here very nicely that Parkin, both in the fibroblasts and also in the neurons, uh, upon stress with valinomycin, um, depolarization of mitochondria does uh, disappear because it is recruited to mitochondria. Also, you can see, and this is only true, of course, for the neurons, that these cells stain positively for tyrosine hydroxylase as a marker from dopaminergic neurons. Interestingly, only in the fibroblasts, but not in the neurons of PINK1 um, patients and controls also, we observe conversion of LC31 to LC32 as a marker of autophagy. Also, P62 is expressed to a much lesser extent uh, in the neurons than in fibroblasts. So there are differences uh, between our fibroblast model and the IPS-derived neurons. This is even more striking when it comes to the final step, uh, mitophagy. In the fibroblasts, we do see uh, in the control fibroblasts uh, mitophagy, or complete loss of mitochondria in um, the uh, cells treated with valinomycin. This is not the case in the PINK1 mutants. Um, when we're doing the exact same experiments in the IPS-derived neurons, we still see in the control the fragmented uh, mitochondria, but we don't see any mitophagy. Um, and again, also, this is not present in the PINK1 uh, mutation carrier neurons. Uh, again, showing a, a very important difference between uh, the neuronal model and the fibroblasts. There's lots of other now new findings also um, when it comes to IPS-derived models of Parkin and PINK1. Let me just show you one here that uh, shows that there is also an altered morphology of neurons with respect to neurite length uh, and the number also of branch points, for example. Some of the Parkin mutant phenotypes can actually be rescued, and this is shown in this slide. Uh, for example, we were able to show that the form factor, that is the degree of branching, is reduced in Parkin mutants, and that can be nicely rescued with a uh, new Parkin interactor. Also, complex one activity, which is reduced in Parkin mutants, can be rescued with the very same um, Parkin interactor. So uh, all in all, and uh, what are the perspectives of IPS cells? First of all, and we've already started to do this, um, we can better understand disease mechanism. Use disease, we can better understand disease mechanisms using this endogenous model. 
these cells can also be a very powerful tool to perform drug testing uh, in a high throughput manner. And for this, uh, it is important to keep in mind that we can not only generate uh, neurons, dopaminergic neurons, but also other cell types, such as, for example, cardiomyocytes, to test for drug to toxicity in the very same uh, patient cells. And finally, there is also a future potential for regenerative approaches. And with this, I would like to acknowledge the IPS team at our center and uh, the entire Institute for Neurogenetics. Thank you very much. <laughs>